Now think of it this way. On your road to success, what do you want people to hear when you open your mouth? Complaints or gratitude? When you complain, you sound powerless. When you're grateful, you sound powerful. Hey, it's Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. I pray that as you invest in yourself today, you're captivated and you're catapulted to live your dreams. Today I want to talk to you about, it's kind of touchy. It's seven things unsuccessful people do that the successful don't. Now first let me say, Nobody's perfect, and even highly successful people fall prey to some of these negative habits now and then. But the truth is, there are certain behaviors and habits that could be stopping your success. You know, the first step is to recognize the bad habits. And if you closely identify with any of the following seven habits that research indicates are associated with unsuccessful people, then it's time to reevaluate the routines, right? Now, please know that I admit there are some times when I have indulged in some of these negative actions, but let's just strive our best to steer clear of them when we find ourselves starting to fall into these detours that derail our dreams, right? Okay, so here we go. Seven habits. Number one is they complain. Did you know that people can identify exactly how successful or unsuccessful you are the moment you open your mouth? I know, I don't like that either. But the truth is, the only thing complaining does is convince other people that you're not in control. Now think of it this way. On your road to success, what do you want people to hear when you open your mouth? Complaints or gratitude? When you complain, you sound powerless. When you're grateful, you sound powerful. Now if we want to complain, there will always be something to complain about. If we want to be grateful, there will always be things to be grateful for, right? The beauty is the choice is up to us. You know, Joyce Meyer says, don't complain about something you don't have a vision to change. Number two is they are always late. I know, this one is, is touchy. For some people, did you know, being on time seems almost impossible? Even if they have all day to prepare for an evening dinner out, they're still running around in a frenzy trying to get out the door 10 minutes late. Now, I read something about this just Bear with me, don't get upset. But it was talking about how chronic lateness communicates a subtle yet strong message. And this is what it said. You're inconsiderate of other people's schedules. You're a procrastinator. You're not an effective time manager. You're selfish. You're unreliable. And you're not in control. Now, I feel harsh even saying that, but do you know study after study shows this to be the message that you're giving about your lateness, not intentionally. You're not trying to be selfish and trying to do that, but it's a subtle message that comes across. You know, I've spoken many times for a church in London called Harvest Church, where they pay strict attention to starting their weekly services on time. And the pastor, Joe Naughton, she previously held a prestigious job in marketing for the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, before she and her husband began pastoring. Now, with her adorable British accent, she would say, I can't for the life of me, I'm not even going to try to imitate her, but she said, I can't for the life of me understand how anyone would consider showing up late for church. And I was like, really? <laughs> she said, yeah, when I worked for the prince, you arrived early and were in place eagerly awaiting his royal arrival. She said to be late would be inconceivable. Then she explained this in her shock about people showing up for church late. She said lateness wasn't tolerated for the prince. Why should it be for the king of kings? I was like, wow, point well taken. <laughs> Number three is they blame others. They blame others. You know, unsuccessful people are always pointing the finger at someone else for why they are where they are in life. They'll give you every reason in the book as to why they can't succeed. It could be the government, the economy, the president, the lack of education, lack of time, poor parenting, the ex-spouse, you name it. It's never their fault. Well, blaming does nothing. It, it solves nothing, right? We make our choices and our choices have consequences. So when you learn to take personal responsibility for where you are in life, it's a massive step on the road to being successful. In fact, Galatians says we are each responsible for our own conduct. So number four <clears throat> is they waste money. You know, if money is always burning a hole in your pocket, you're setting yourself up for failure. Financially unsuccessful people, and I was for many years, have no idea where all their money is going. The biggest drain of money spent is on eating out. 
You know, the lunch you didn't cook because you just weren't in the mood adds up to $10 a day times four days a week. Now you're spending over $2,000 a year on the salad, the muffin, and the sandwich that you could have made before you ran out the house. Well, imagine that two grand going in a savings account or towards your dream vacation. Instead, your financial future was eaten up by poor decisions, right? Okay, number five is they surround themselves with other unsuccessful people. Now, nearly everybody knows that their closest friends can affect their life, but what most people don't realize is how profound this influence is on your level of success. They affect your self-confidence, your beliefs, your habits, your spending habits, your health choices, your religious and political views, your discipline or lack of it, and so much more. You know, they say if you want to get fit, hang out with fit people. You want to be rich, spend time with rich people. We tend to feed off of each other's energy. And you know, when you think about it, Jesus loved everybody. Tax collectors, prostitutes, thieves, adulterers, he loved everybody. But he was very selective about his inner circle. Yes, he had 12 men around him, but think about it. He spent most of his ministry with only three, Peter, James, and John, right? Well, successful people are very careful and very intentional about their inner circle. They say you are the average of your five closest friends. So look at the five around you. What are their disciplines? What are their goals and aspirations in life? Do they support yours or derail yours? Bible says walk with wise people and you'll become wise. Associate with fools and you'll get in trouble. So are you bearing with me? I hope I'm not being too harsh. Number six is they watch a lot of TV. Unsuccessful people waste valuable time watching others live their dreams rather than eliminate just one hour to go invest in their own. You know, one study showed on average that the typical American views just over five hours of TV every single day. What does that mean? Well, if we break those numbers down, it reveals that the average person is watching close to 1,700 hours of TV each year. 1,700 hours of sitting on your bottom (laughs) (laughs) Watching other people fall in love, start businesses, travel the world, have families, achieve success, it's your turn. Don't watch life, live it. Let me point this out real quick. If the average lifespan is around 78 years old, that equates to about 15 years of your life staring at a screen. 15 years of your life. So I want you to eliminate at least an hour and get moving, right? Last one I want to share is number seven, they gossip. Again, are you so busy watching other people live their lives that you miss out on your own? What about your unique goals, your dreams, your aspirations? Don't forget who you are and what you should be doing instead of worrying about what everybody else is doing. You know, I like to refer to this quote as a way of just kind of identifying where people are in their mindset and journey to success and even to check up on myself from time to time. This is what it says. I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt. She said, big minds talk about ideas. Average minds talk about events. Small minds talk about people. You know, I like the Pinterest graphic that says, I'm too busy watering my own grass to notice if yours is greener. Well, see, that's the attitude of a successful person. They're not watching everybody else competing with their success and feeling insecure. No, they stay in their lane, focused on their unique vision without concern to what others are doing. So remember this. God is going to hold you accountable for what he's called you to do, not what he's called others to do. So I don't want you to get discouraged with this podcast. I want you to get determined. And you can reinvent your life by making a few small changes in your daily routine. Like, you know, the unsuccessful habits that I just listed, think about those and do the opposite. Like, instead of complaining, start a gratitude journal. Instead of being late, practice getting up on time for seven days straight. You know, instead of spending too much money, Make your lunch every single day this week. You get the idea. So get inspired to go after every dream that God has put in your heart. Start by changing your habits. I hope you enjoyed that today because I love cheering you on to live your dreams. And hey, we will be opening enrollment for our most exclusive online course, Vision 101 Online, in the next few weeks. I wanted to tell you about that because I'm telling you it has changed people's lives. You know, maybe your goals for this year fell through or... Maybe you don't even remember what your goals are. That's how I used to be. 
With Vision 101, I'll give you a plan to keep your goals in front of you and the tools to stay disciplined in pursuing them. Head to vision101.online for more information. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. Now let me close out real quick with our subscriber of the week. This week, it's someone that goes by the name The Free Life. The Free Life says, great point. It says, the defining moment in my life was when I realized and truly accepted how much God loves me. That's the starting point, isn't it? And that I am precious to Him. It says, in that moment, I went from years of hating myself to having an unbreakable confidence. Gosh, I love that. If I didn't have that moment, I would not be where I am today. A successful business owner, a writer, and most importantly, I would not be sharing God's love with hundreds of people. God is good. The free life? You're amazing, and that is exactly where it all starts. I remember the first thing I ever heard from the Lord when people would tell me, God will speak to you. I was like, I doubt it. He'll speak to my dad, but not me. The first thing I ever heard was, I love you. And then the Lord said, I've loved you all along. And I just broke. I thought, really? He loves me even after the dumb things I've done? That's exactly what the free life is talking about. And I'm so proud of you for taking action and following your dreams. And you know, for anybody listening, that's where it starts is just just saying, Lord, thank you for loving me. So be sure and do that because that's a precious point. Like I always say, if you can change your routine, you can change your whole life. You know, I really want you to grab hold of these success habits so you can apply them to your life. That's why I want to offer you the first chapter of my brand new book, The Five Things Successful People Do Before 8 a.m. I'm going to give you the first chapter absolutely free. Just click the link in the description to get your free chapter of my new book. And don't forget, for more consistent motivation, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. You can find all the handles there. Click that little red subscribe button so you can get consistent teaching to live your dreams. And don't forget, I am your cheerleader of dreams. Thank you for watching. The next conference is a premier success training conference based on God's Word to help leaders grow. Join us January 25th and 26th on the lake in Rockwall, Texas for two days of insight that will take your business, personal life, and ministry to the next level. You'll hear from my special guest, Chris Brown, who has 20 years of leadership experience and worked alongside Dave Ramsey at Dave Ramsey Solutions as a nationally syndicated radio host. I'll also be interviewing Gigi Butler of Gigi's Cupcakes, the largest cupcake franchise in the world. If you're ready to go to the next level, this is a weekend vital to your growth. Seats are limited and will sell out, so head over to terry.com slash next to register today so you can connect with influencers, elevate your thinking, and go to the next level in 2019.